nation, this great land of America is in dire economic straits. State unemployment rates are higher than they've been in years, and have barely come down since what we thought is the peak of the recession. On top of that, health care costs are going up as the labor force increases the age. As the baby boomers move into retirement, there's less people working, and there's more people getting sick and using the hospitals and other programs to keep them healthy. As you can see, this trend is a only increasing as more of them move into the retirement age and age. However, more people are also getting fired. Companies are downsizing due to a weak economy, not having the funds to continue on. Stock market hasn't recovered either from the crash in 2007. Dow Jones is barely where it was a few years ago. Housing market hasn't done any better. In fact, we haven't even seen the bottom of the price and decrease in home values. This isn't good for the economy. This isn't good for America. On top of that, the government seems to think they can spend their way out of debt. Have you ever spent your way out of debt? Let's take a look at the spending. When arguing against increases in the federal deficit, one of the biggest objections I've heard is, George W. Bush was spending like Paris Hilton on a bender. Why the sudden concern with spending now that President Obama is doing it? I think the best way to answer that question is to look at the federal debt as a kind of road trip. Our debt road trip starts in the heart of New York City. For every mile we travel away from Madison Square Garden, the debt increases by about $6 billion. Let's say that every year is an hour. That way we can describe how fast we're increasing the debt in a way we're all familiar with, miles per hour. We're going to adjust all our numbers for inflation and pick up the road trip at the beginning of the 20th century. It's 1900 and we're outside Newark, New Jersey. For almost 30 years we kind of wander around the New Jersey area and by the time the Great Depression hits we're in Trenton. Then we get the Great Depression and World War II. Under Franklin Roosevelt, we drive all the way to Greensboro, North Carolina, doing about 40 miles an hour. But with the war over, under Harry Truman, we slammed on the debt brakes, pulled a Yui, and drove the debt car back just south of Richmond, Virginia. There we hang out for decades, never going further than Cochrane. Then, under Ronald Reagan with the Democratic Congress, we sped up to 50 and drove almost all the way to Atlanta. Under H.W. Bush and with the Democratic Congress, we were doing 63 and ended up just past Tuscaloosa. Then, under Clinton and with a Republican Congress, we slowed down to about 18, which brought us just outside Jackson, Mississippi. Under George W. Bush and with a Republican Congress, we sped back up to 64, taking us a little bit past the Dallas-Fort Worth area. This was the fastest the debt car had ever gone in history. At which point, Bush got out of the driver's seat and Obama got in, and we started going backwards. <laughs> I tried to be funny. No, I'm kidding. According to his own budget estimates for the next eight years, President Obama plans on driving the debt car at 174 miles per hour. This is not an extrapolation of 2009. This is the president's own budget predictions for the next eight years. I can understand someone who's comfortable doing 63 getting pretty freaked out when they suddenly start going 174. My mother is one of those people, as is my wife. And apparently all of my friends, none of whom were willing to drive 170 miles an hour down a perfectly flat, straight piece of highway while I filmed them for this video. Instead, what you get is this less exciting but somewhat safer visual of how fast Obama is increasing the debt compared to the last four presidents. As you can see, Obama's planned spending makes Bush look like a coupon-clipping housewife. What I don't understand is people who were screaming that we were driving irresponsibly fast at 63, suddenly claiming that 170 is a perfectly reasonable speed. I think it may have more to do with who's driving, but it doesn't sound like an era of responsibility to me. You may ask yourself, is there an end to this spending? How do we control it? Well, it starts with you. Responsible and informed, educated voters will hold politicians their campaign promises. Also, we can look back to previous administrations. As you can see, we were able to maintain spending levels quite easily for several periods of time.